when a moving car suddenly applies brakes it starts to skid over or slide over the surface on which it is moving just like this these are skid marks and the car could be applying a brake for for any reason there could be if some other car in front of it 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 does not want to collide there can be a person and sometimes unfortunately accidents do happen and investigators can actually determine the speed at which this car was moving just by measuring the length of the skid marks and also getting a sense of how much friction there was between the tire and the road surface in this video we will understand how do investigators actually do that how do investigators determine the speed with which this car was moving before it started skidding so here we have the car which is moving to the right and when when you apply the brake suddenly the tires they stop rotating they start skidding and let's say after after skidding for a certain amount of distance it comes to a stop and this this right here is the skid mark so in this situation we do not really know the initial velocity but we know the final velocity and also we can measure the length of these skid marks so let's say the length of these skid marks this is 10 meters now you might be thinking that th there will be a skid mark from the right tires and there will be a skid mark from the left tires investigators can measure the length of both of those skid marks and then take an average so this kind of looks like this the skid mark length from the right tires plus the skid mark length from the left tires divided by 2 and let's say that this distance is approximately 10 meters we do not know how much time the car took to stop we also do not know any acceleration that is involved but investigators do actually try to figure out the acceleration that the car faced and the car will be facing an acceleration in the opposite direction they can actually figure this out so this acceleration this acceleration really depends on how much frictional force there is between the tire and the road surface if the road surface is extremely rough you can imagine that applying a brake will try to stop the car even sooner because there will be a lot of frictional force in in, in on the left direction in the left direction so frictional force really depends not just on the road surface it also depends on the type of tire that you are using so it depends on both the tire both the tire and the road both the tire and the road and by taking into account these two these two factors investigators calculate something called as a coefficient of kinetic friction they calculate something called as a coefficient of kinetic friction this coefficient gives a measure of the frictional force between the tire and the road and as a result of that investigators can try and figure out the acceleration that the car faced we will not go into how exactly they measure the coefficient of kinetic friction and the frictional force and the acceleration because it involves some knowledge of newton's second law and how to balance forces and what is a frictional force in this video we can just say that the acceleration turns out to be approximately 8 meters per second square because most of the tires and most of the roads are made of the same same material right so most of the time so we can say approximately this is 8 meters per second square now we know three variables we know we know final velocity distance of skid marks acceleration that the car faced and we do not know the initial velocity which is what we are interested in we do not know we do not know time so we can choose a kinematic equation which is independent of time which does not have the variable t and has all of these acceleration initial final and distance so turns out we can use this equation v square this is equals to u square plus 2 as and final velocity is zero initial is something we need to figure out and acceleration because it's in the opposite direction to the to the movement of velocity and we can say we can take a coordinate axis we can say that this direction this is positive y and this direction is positive x so velocity was always in the positive x direction but acceleration is in the negative x direction so this will be a negative negative number so this becomes minus 2 into 8 16 into 10 this is 160 and when we work this out u really comes out to be equal to under root of 160 and this comes out to be equal to 12.6 meters per second if we convert this in kilometers per hour this is 45.4 kilometers per hour 